2008, basically lost everything. To be able to recover enough to come down and live in such a place, it's amazing. Every day you look at this and just kind of wonder just how blessed we really are. Well, hello again to many of our uh, people who saw our first video almost four years ago. Um, we just now have been in the same place for that four years and have a new way of life. I'm Dennis Mallerney and my wife. Lenore. Um, we moved here from Reno just a little over four, four and a half years ago and uh, have come down here into Astana. Uh, this is near Boca Chica. Um, we're on the Playa Hermosa turnoff road coming off with Rincon Beach as the main beach right here that we're at at the same time. Where we live, we're about a two minute walk to one of the finest beaches in all of Panama, I believe. We've traveled a good bit, but it's just gorgeous here. We don't get many of the breezes here off the ocean because we're just around a corner of the establishment here. So typically we'd love to have our screens open, but we are right at the edge of the rainforest. And as a result, there are bugs and insects that are here that you have to deal with. The little chitres, no seams we call them in the US, um, can come right through the mesh in most screens and all that. So typically we use ceiling fans the majority of the time to just kind of keep a breeze in the house with everything. And that also helps with the humidity as well. We do our, use our AC more than people on the ocean front say, um, but we don't catch those cooling breezes anyway. So it's a trade-off. The people on the beach, they have things like their barbecue grills or other metal fixtures and railings, all types of things outside of their house. The sea brine eats that up pretty regularly. Almost every year they have to do some form of maintenance. Grills typically last two years probably before they're rusted out down there. Um, here we're far enough away we don't get any of that at all. Mine's been sitting out there for four years and barely has a rust spot on it. Um, so we're protected from that. That's one of the trade-offs is the fact that we didn't get the million dollar view looking out at that gorgeous ocean but it is two minutes to get there and as a result we don't have near that kind of extra work or replacing things. The water temperature is Perfect. You, you can walk straight in and not get that, get to certain parts of your body and go, oh, I've got to wait, wait a second. The water is a perfect temperature. Um, we, because we have barrier islands off of our beach, we don't get a lot of heavy wave action. And, and that, so uh, we kind of, re we refer to it as the binky beach because we feel like most days you can take a baby in that water. It's just a very lovely spot. It's wide open on uh, probably the busiest day and, and, and we go, oh my, the beach is so crowded. There was like 17 people on a beach that's a kilometer long. <laughs> the beach is in a beautiful protected cove. Um, it's just gorgeous. It's very scenic, unlike places like Las Lajas or the rest of it, where it's just a very long, straight beach, but relatively featureless. This thing is just picturesque, scenic. The water, you can get a very definite feel for the tide change in Panama because it's a 12 to 18 foot tide change on a daily basis in Panama. High tide, you're right up to the high levels of the beach and you'll see part of that. And then low tide goes out almost 100 yards out at low tide, a length of a football field, and you can then walk out into that water almost the same distance and still only be chest high in water. So it's very safe. We never get the rip tides that any of the other beaches get. Uh, just beautiful, comfortable, and yes, that's where we all kind of get together. I tend to believe that we have landed in one of the most fabulous places in all of Panama. Um, the community, the homes here are beautiful the community itself is so close-knit. Now, admittedly, a bunch of the folks here with their homes, they're only here primarily through the majority of the dry season, typically November, December, up until April or May of the, the following year. And this place is full of people all over. But even in the rainy season now, with there's probably four or five families that live here full-time, uh, and the rest come down and pop in and out all the time. Um, but we, there is an immense requirement almost to help each other and be around in a remote location like this, to turn around and really be there for your neighbor. Um, we just had another neighbor have a major accident and Lenore's been 
the famous taxi driver of Astana, because <laughs> I'm still dealing with getting my Panama license and whatnot, but um, she, we end up running a great deal into David to help other neighbors and everything else too at the same time. Or, or you can text somebody and say, oh, uh, are you in David today? I forgot I need this or that, and we bring it back for each other. Um, we help each other very much. I'll tell you, during COVID, this was probably the best place in the entire world to be. Um, we were safe. No one got, got sick. We we're isolated enough that we went, on, we went about our daily business as if what was going on out there was not going on. Um, we weren't careless about it. Of course, we were all very cautious in the beginning, but as, as we became less and less fearlo fearful of what our impact on each other might be. Um, many of us interacted as if, you know, it was just another day in paradise. Um, and anyone that, that did have health concerns, then they self-isolated. Uh, but it was everyone's choice. Now the community here in general, you have never seen such an active and intertwined crowd of people. And again, from all over the world, we have folks here from the UK, um, couple but from Russia all the time, several South Africans, um, lots of Canadians, but just an amazing mix of people here from all over the world in reality uh, come in and do it. But activities during the dry season in particular, we are, if you aren't doing something with the crowd typically three to four days of the week for months at a time, it would be very unusual. Um, everything from just get-togethers and barbecues at houses. We're constantly down at the beach playing things like beach bocce and, and other things. Um, disc golf twice a week for the fellas. <laughs> disc golf twice a week. We've got a beautiful 18-hole course here that we've developed um, through the rainforest, which is just amazing. Uh, horseshoe pit that I've got in the backyard. We have 30 people, 25 to 30 people at a time out here with the barbecue and the music going and just an awful lot of activities here on a regular basis. And an awful lot of the folks here also travel from here to foreign countries together. They're constantly pairing up and going to Colombia. Oh, I forgot, we've got someone from Colombia, others from Peru, we've got people from everywhere. Uh, but they will constantly go with each other to different locations around the globe and everything else and come back and share their adventures with us as well too. We almost look forward when it becomes rainy season simply because we finally get a chance to rest. <laughs> <laughs> At our it's, age, having activities three or four nights a week can wear you down a little bit. So. And, and you do get a little bit of that fear of missing out. Oh gosh, there's, I'm so tired, but there's a bonfire on the beach tonight. Everybody, six o'clock. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll take one for the team. But it does mean hauling wood and everything time. else down to the beach that day, so you're working to get there, but it's beautiful. And oh, we, he is. We always try to do uh, with a full moon in particular for the bonfires because it is so gorgeous on that beach when it's all lit up with the moon in the background and the rest of it. And same thing, uh, we've had anywhere. The last one was kind of in the beginning of rainy season. There was only about eight of us that showed up, but typically you're talking anywhere from 20 to 30 to 40 people will be down there sometimes into the wee hours of the morning, <laughs> <laughs> just enjoying the beach and everything that's around here. As well as with the activities here in the community, Boca Chica offers you some of the absolute best fishing opportunities, going out to the islands for day trips, whale watching, any number of things on the water and the rest of it. So. I mean, we really feel like we've got everything we need here, other than maybe a Home Depot. <laughs> Being a DIY guy, believe me, I could use one in Panama. So. <laughs> yeah. A month, couple months after we first moved in, uh, we had a house that you could not even see from the road, and if you were sitting on the front porch of the house, you couldn't see the road. It was so covered in overgrown vegetation. We have gone through, as you will see, pictures of the outside of the house that are just magnificent. There's a planter around the front of the house that we carried every single rock that's on that planter from our beach here locally, and that was what it was embedded on the, the facer of the planters around the house, repainting the house. And above all else, the biggest project we took on is where we're sitting right now, and that's this kitchen. Um, it was very tiny. Um, I don't think it was more than about 10 to 12 foot by 10 to 12 foot, and we have now expanded it and made it into a beautiful place where 
gatherings, social events, people, comfortable, it's just a big change. Many other projects as well too, we've put in a pump house with an extra storage tank, a deposito for our tools, a whole backyard and, and a horseshoe pit of back um, with other things as well too in that to just really make this a very comfortable place and the place we love. When you describe rainy season, you say, yeah, there's rainy season. They don't really have a concept of how much rain falls, falls here. And uh, while our kitchen was under renovation, they had just laid the new tile in, in this area and we got one of those gully washers, as they call them in the Midwest or wherever. And um, the water came down off of this mountain behind the house and there's already, there was already a drainage ditch there and it came down so hard that it filled that trench and flowed up over and into my new kitchen. So that led to a whole other project to mitigate those, those things. Also the doors that we chose to have and stuff actually fit the openings. We have, so we have fewer uh, little creepy crawlers that come into the house through, through cracks that you, know, you could drive a semi through. <laughs> With all the remodeling we have done, which has been pretty extensive all the way around, for the most part, we hired Panamanians for a couple of reasons. One being the fact it is very difficult here, not being well-versed in the language, to get the proper materials, equipment, uh, the working crews, and the rest of it. And some of these jobs were pretty extensive, where she'll tell you I've been pretty good at remodeling our past homes. These ones, all I could do was be here and help facilitate everything that they wanted to do, help haul away all the debris, get work, get things for them as they needed them and that type of stuff. So an awful lot of this was all Panamanian uh, locals here. And we have some guys that work here that are just exceptional. Um, yeah, they really think the job through and really do it to perfection and they stand behind their work, which we really feel very grateful for. And we, were, we started this project about just a couple of weeks before COVID hit, and those guys, they got it done. And uh, nine months later, I have this beautiful kitchen to... Now, admittedly, nine months, it was kind of unique in the fact that <laughs> this wall here on the side of us was nothing but master plastic sheeting. We couldn't use the kitchen at all with everything going on, so we were doing dishes in the bathroom sink and such. And it's a little unnerving sometimes sitting on the couch on the other side of the wall right here and having them take sledgehammers to some of the parts that needed to be removed and the rest of it. But, or uh, jackhammers. <laughs> or uh, <laughs> all of the floor, old flooring had to be jackhammered out, and they went down several inches so they could pour a nice, Even fresh, level foundation. level foundation for the new tile. It really did a beautiful job. and um, It is challenging going through these type <laughs> of projects, but it's one of the things that helps you in Panama as far as learning patience and adaptability and having to come up with answers, which is something particularly, I think, more out here in the remote communities. Boca Chica is pretty tiny, if anybody's been down here, and versus places like Boquete, David, or Panama City. There isn't a lot here, so you really have to be able to quickly adapt and, and find answers to things which you run into along the way with these kind of projects. The uh, craftsmanship and the, you know, like fifth generation of craftsmen I was working with and a custom job for a whole new space, I mean, the, the price was phenomenal compared to a custom job in the U.S. To, com to just complete what she was saying, the woodworkers that came in and did these cabinets, um, they are all five generations working in a shop up in the back of Boquete, from the great-great-grandson all the way up to, you know, grandpa way up there at the top uh, working together. Mm -hmm. These people are so dedicated and careful with their work. Uh, they dried the wood out for months before they turn around and did any kind of building so that the wood wouldn't shrink or crack, which is part of the humidity issues that you have here. They came through and did everything. When they came down and arrived with all the cabinets, they anticipated that they were gonna be sleeping on the floor and everything else in the house. We went ahead with El Regalo being right here. We got these guys a couple of rooms. 
They have never worked so hard, so long, been so fervent about making sure everything was absolutely perfect. Not only did they do a, an amazing job, and they cooked dinner for Lenore too, because I was in the States at the time, but- Not just dinner. But they come back uh, a month or two later just to kind of recheck and see how things are, where needs to be little touches or patches or little adjustments. The quality, not only with the cabinet makers, with the folks who did the granite countertops, um, and Eric and his group that did the actual blowout of the kitchen, pretty amazing. I mean, we've had some really excellent people to work with. Yeah, and um, also these guys, when they arrived, they, uh, uh, El Regalo wasn't officially open. They didn't have a chef to, for us to provide any meals for them. So they brought their uncle, and he's, he's unloading, you know, uh, ice chests and a little two burner propane stove. And I'm going, oh, you won't need that. And he goes, que pasa? I go, mi casa es su casa. I, did. I had half the refrigerator cleaned out. He, they put all their food in there. And I uh, said, you know, use, use my stove. And he goes, I'm cooking for you. And for three days, he cooked every meal. And uh, I got introduced to some very delicious Panamanian food. So it was, it was a great experience for all of us. As hard as it was going through getting all the remodeling done and the rest of it, we're actually at the point now where we finished the, uh, the walkway that's out going out front to the street with the bridge now that crosses the ditch so all of the people in Sonic can walk across it and get here at any time. Um, that's our last huge project. So from here on, we're gonna kind of kick back and actually start to enjoy more and more of what we have put together. So big difference finally. <laughs> Maybe I won't be sweating quite so much every day. <laughs> I think one of the most impressive things to me has just been living in an area where we deal a lot more closely with the locals and the indigenous as well too at the same time. Uh, it has really enriched our adventure here without a doubt. Um, as you'll see with some of this, we've gone through some major changes here and worked with many crews. Uh, and with that have gone to great abilities to have friendships with a lot of the locals and their families and people. And it just makes a heck of a lot of difference when you're in Panama to really feel that Panama experience of the people in the country that we've already come to love so very much. I think there's, well, to be truthful, here in Boca Chica, there are four absolutely beautiful resorts that are here. Um, down in Boca Chica area, close by there, you've got the three, the Bocas del Mar, Seagull Cove, and the Boca Chica Eco Lodge. All three get amazing reviews. The people are wonderful. We have, the fourth one is right here in Astana, El Regalo Hotel. Um, I'm sure you'll see some pictures of that as well too, but these folks, the place had been closed. The new owners came in the exact same month that we moved into Astana. They bought the hotel and started revising it and bringing it up. It is beautiful. Uh, the hosts, Jenny and Carol, are just some of the greatest people in the world. Their family is wonderful. They did everything they could as well, too, during COVID times to have us come up for different events. Again, everybody being protective, anybody who'd been outside kind of stayed away for days or whatever. But we even had great dinners and social events and even sang karaoke many a night and just mm -hmm. kind of things to really enjoy. Uh, the community here is just great and having El Regalo here, the best part, we can go up there for a wonderful dinner, have a drink or two and not have to drive those crazy pothole and dirt roads to get back home. It's right here. It's <laughs> less than half a mile or should I say a, less than a kilometer up the road <laughs> from the house right here, So, but in this division. Nearly three years ago, I was about to walk my dog, had him on the leash, and I put him on my flip-flops to head to the beach with him when he sees a squirrel. And he took off. I didn't let go of the leash, and with his momentum, he yanked me um, off of the porch, which they sit a little higher here, and on the way down I hit my um, ankle on the steps and um, fractured it in three places and dislocated it. Being an hour from the hospital 
was not uh, something that I was really thrilled about at that point. But um, we, we got me stabilized. My neighbor lady came over with a pair of leggings, of all things, to use as a giant ace bandage to kind of get me to where we could take me to the hospital. Um, in those days, now it's quite improved now, it's still not perfect, but the access road between our house and the pavement is several kilometers of very rough terrain in the rainy season, and September is almost the peak of it. So, um, yeah, that was a long trip, but uh, this guy took care of me. He drove very carefully, very slowly, and then very, very fast <laughs> to the hospital. Only time she's never complained about me driving fast. <laughs> um, in, and, the, in the first video, we kind of shared with the local clinics, and she explained how an hour at a doctor's here in the local clinics for some uh, allergy, allergic reactions and other things she did, the entire bill at the end of it after an hour with the doctor and everything else was a whole dollar and 25 cents. Both of us can share now, we both had a surgery of one kind or another, and I think hers is the amazing one. Um, she spent, it was a four and a half hour surgery, five days in the hospital, months of physical therapy and all the rest of it, and without insurance, we did have some and eventually got most of the money back, but without insurance, the entire bill for all of that was only $17,900. That's one night stay in a US hospital without a surgery, so insane all the way around. I just three weeks ago went in and had my knee, had to do arthroscopic surgery, and in the States again, that's anywhere from fifteen to $25,000 minimum that you're gonna pay for that with an overnight stay in the hospital and the rest. Um, we turned around and when we've now got local Panama health insurance for these hospitals. We did not realize that coverage for surgeries only happens a year after you've had the plan. That was a month and a half further down the road. I, we didn't want to wait in pain. So when the doctor found out that we had to pay, he says typically, he says that cost is $5,500 for that surgery here. He goes, because it's out of your pocket, I'm only gonna charge you $3,200. A lot of things happen here, and you do typically have to pay these costs up front as expats, but you get the money back or whatever from whatever insurance or whatever you submit. <clears throat> Forgive me. But, and the care of the doctors, the staff, the hospitals here, tremendous, better than anything we ever had in the States for any reason. Um, the doctors have actually given us their personal home cell phone numbers and the rest of it. With her surgery, the doctor was leaving the next day to Argentina on a vacation. He turned around and called her from Argentina just to check on her. Um, I can't say anything else except how exceptional the medical care has been here in Panama. I had cataract surgery. I know that is a very expensive uh, surgery in the U.S. Um, what did they tell you, 10,000 an eye or Some, something, something like that? Close. Um, yeah, mine was like $1,650 per eye. And that included the, you know, it, it was a sur surgical procedure in the hospital. Um, I didn't stay overnight. Here I am, I'm seeing 2015 now. <laughs> I think the only negative that we have as far as medical, and that's simply because of the remote location we live at. It's an hour into David from here. We do have local clinics that can take care of most things, sickness, illness, any of that kind of thing, and they would probably attempt to do triage if there was something serious, but the big thing is then get you into David to be able to get to a hospital. Uh, so it's an hour, and that's something we all have to think about at our ages, you know, medical care being that far away. But overall, um, we know the risk, and it's just one of those things that we took into play as far as considering this place and where the location is. Mm -hmm. but. It's to us, it's more than worth it. <laughs> well, I get asked a lot about uh, what I miss about the States. I would have to say, when I think about, have thought about it over time, I miss uh, thrift stores, being able to <laughs> get, get cool secondhand things, you know. Um, they, that's just not really an option here. We have some uh, consignment stores that um, I think, uh, for the most part, are um, 
Well, there's, uh, they're few and far between, and they're pro uh, mostly things that people have brought here and then realize that they just don't translate to Panama. Um, I know we, uh, we brought a few items that I went, what on earth was I thinking? <laughs> you know, um, and that would be something that you'd, you wish someone could tell you, don't bring leather goods because the, the climate here is just um, the kind of environment that eats leather alive and with mold and mildew and stuff and you just can't even battle it. So um, what, uh, what else would we not have brought? Well, anything like soft wood furniture of any kind because there are termites all over Panama. They will eat up pine and those kind of things. Um, some of the key things more importantly to bring um, with me, it's always been bring some USA tools. I really believe, and many others have voiced the same thing, that Panama quality tools, though they're the same brands, they're almost like the seconds from the factory. Um, they're not, they don't, aren't as durable, they don't last as long, and sometimes not as powerful. One thing I would suggest if anybody's bringing goods is be sure to bring a gas-powered, good-strength pressure washer. You are going to clear your driveways or house or whatever else once or twice a year, and the ones they sell here, 90% of them are little electric ones that simply don't have the power. And the gas-powered ones you find here are typically four to five times the price than in the USA. It's one of the few items I've seen that is just highly overpriced here compared to what you could bring down. So that would be a worthwhile thing. But art supplies. My wife, the artiste. <laughs> yeah. You can, there are a few places, less at our end of the country, being down towards David and the Costa Rican border versus Panama City. Mm -hmm. She's able to get some things here, but overall the majority we have shipped in via Amazon or something like that to keep her in all of her supplies. Though I did bring a lot with me in anticipation and I, ch and I changed mediums. I, um, up until a couple of years prior to moving here, um, uh, everything I painted in was in oils. I liked the medium, the versatility and, and all of that. But um, it occurred to me before we moved, what if those items are not available there? So I made friends with acrylics and um, they are available here in more limited supply, like he was saying, but in Panama City, I've found a couple of places that, that have artist grade um, acrylics and such. So um, yeah, it's all, it's all in finding out. They, you pretty much can give, get anything you want here. It's just what it takes to get anything you want here. Um, and by then, you might adjust your expectations. I think managing your expectations is really important. And patience. <laughs> Loads of patience. So because my wife has her visa, and I still struggle getting mine, working on that, hopefully good news this week, but my trips back to the U.S. at times is always, you can imagine, my spare luggage is usually full of either Home Depot or art supplies coming back to Panama with us at the same time. So. Or books. Or books. English, English books, books yeah. harder to come by here. So, you know, lots of lots of people have their Kindle, and and that's great. But we're old-fashioned page turners, and <laughs> love the feel of a book in my hands, <laughs> guaranteed. Here, the primary fish. Well, there's a lot. There's what they call the inshore fishing, and you can get some really good eating fish from Pargo, um, Sierra, a few other types of fish here. The Spanish bonita, which in America we always threw the bonita back because they just did so oily. The Spanish bonita here are actually very tasty. Uh, corvina, the sea bass here and that, locally they've got those in the shore. But then you can go out on the big sport fishing boats and primarily the two biggest catches overall are the tuna, which can go anywhere from the typical 25 pounders up to things that fit across your lap, 100 pounders or better and that depending upon how much you go out. Uh, and tuna is wonderful, as well as the dorado fish, uh, or they call it the dolphin fish. That's mahi-mahi. 
And those two fish in particular are the biggest game fish out here to bring back. And primarily one, they're the tastiest, but two, they're also the fact you can freeze that and have tuna steaks or whatever for months and months after a fishing trip out there. But typically it's just one of these things where um, the big game fish are out there. Rooster fish is a big one people like to catch here. You can't bring it in. In fact, they will just bring it up to the boat, get yeah. you a picture, catch and then you and must release. release, catch and release. And there's a couple of other fish like that here as well too. But a wide variety of fish here all the way around. It's kind of hard to explain. In 2008, uh, before I met Lenore at that point, I was going through a divorce, had a house in Reno, and basically lost everything. A house there that was appraised at 325, sold at auction for 126,000 or something close paying everything, child support, all the other things that were there. Basically, I started over again with pretty much nothing. Um, very In minimal nutshell. and the rest. <laughs> um, it was crazy. So for us to turn around and be able to get to, when we finally got together a year later or so, and we've been working with our dreams, to be able to recover enough to come down and live in such a place, in a country, in a community, with people that are so loving and caring. One of the things that has been our calling in some ways, um, and we love Jackie Lang. Um, we stayed at her property for the first two months when we first moved here. Um, we are still in touch a fair, good fair bit, and just I always will respect her. But we have been the ones pushing for people to come down and get a chance to really see Boca Chica for what it is. If you drive in, you're gonna drive down, see two blocks of a sleepy little fishing village, and you're gonna drive back out and wonder what the big deal is. On top of the fact that there are so many communities like this, there's three or four gated communities and other places that you would never find on your own, usually because of the roads getting there. Mm -hmm. um, we've been bringing down people and here in Astana alone, five or six of the houses that have been sold in the last year have all been Panama relocation tours. A couple of them came down because they saw our first video. Others have come down because we constantly invite people to come on down, stay at El Regalo, and turn around and we will show them around the neighborhood, introduce them to the people, show them what is available here. Very grateful. Um, sometimes you can get caught up in the, you know, the, the little things that, that we take for granted as uh, where we came from in the USA. Things that, that like his Home Depot, <laughs> that it's frustrating to have to go from one hardware store to the next, to the next, to the next. But then you come home, you get in your suit, you head to that beach, get in the water and go, how did we get so lucky? <laughs> or it, here we are living the dream. Just you know, the all of those cliches, yes. This beautiful place. They wrote them right out there in that ocean. <laughs> the beautiful place, the people, the, everything around here. We're living, again, right at the edge of the rainforest. There are so many different animals and wildlife around here uh, that are just part of it. We've got three different types of monkeys. We've got coyotes. Yeah, Jagarundi has been here a couple times. Um, Quatamundis. Um, we've got just dozens and dozens of different types of animals and, of course, plenty of iguanas and Lord knows what else from <laughs> the jungle. But it's amazing. Every day you look at this and just kind of wonder just how blessed we really are. And I thank the man upstairs constantly for such. So. <laughs>